Let's take a few minutes and talk about angle grinders. An angle grinder can be an extremely handy thing around the blacksmith shop. They will do a lot of tasks. They are portable. They can go any place an extension cord can go if you have one with a cord. Or if you want to spend a little extra money, you can get some that are battery powered. And we'll talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages of both here. But these things not only will grind, they will sand, they will do a little bit of polishing depending on what you have, and they will cut. And that's one of the big advantages of them. In an ideal shop, you've got a bandsaw, you've got a chop saw, you've got a shear, you've got all sorts of different cutting options. But if you're just starting out, those are expensive options. Now these, a hacksaw and a file, are the inexpensive options. They require no electricity, no batteries. They work in the dark, they work when the sun's shining, they work if the power's out. Very reliable, very traditional. Everybody should have these. But let's get serious. Sometimes you just don't feel like taking the time to cut off a car axle for a hardy tool with a hacksaw or to file a rough forged hardy tool and get the the stem that doesn't quite fit in the hardy hole file down with a file. You can do it and there are hacksaw blades that will cut that car axle so you can make the hardy or cut the sucker rod that is still hard. But it's probably not the way you want to go all the time. And an angle grinder is a good introduction to power tool work. They're light and as I say they are portable. You can use them at the anvil, although don't use your anvil as a surface to cut on. You know, if you just need to sharpen a chisel real quick or something like that, letting it hang over the anvil. But don't get it in a position where you're going to be digging your grinder into the edge of the anvil. On the other hand, this is the perfect tool for cleaning up the edges of your anvil. If you're, they've all been mushroomed over or if you've got a new anvil that has sharp edges, you want to radius those some, and we'll talk about that later, but this is the ideal tool for doing that. I have several angle grinder here. This is the smallest one. This is an old Makita. I have had this for at least 25 years, maybe 30. I don't remember exactly when I bought it, and I don't find a manufacture date on it. But it still works. It's a, the smallest of the bunch, and it's perhaps one of my favorites because it's smaller and lighter. And I really like this old grinder. This is my next oldest grinder I got from Sears, and actually it was one that was a replacement. The first one I burned out of it in about a year. And I don't remember if they covered it under warranty or if I had to replace it, but it was still back when Sears made pretty good tools. And this one is almost as old as this one, so it's 20, 25 years old probably. And it still works and I still use it. It has a flap disc on it, and you can get these flap sandpaper discs in grits from 40 to probably 240 and maybe even finer than that so they're really good for a lot of things and this is all the grinder you need for sharpening your tools in the shop if you need to sharpen a chisel or a punch or a hardy tool or dress your hammer or things like that an assortment of flap discs will really do the job very nicely You'll need to hold the piece in a vise. I would not advise holding a piece here and working with the angle grinder. That's not safe. And angle grinders can be dangerous, so don't, don't think they're benign. I also have this big monster. I almost never use that. That's my least favorite. It's a seven and a half inch grinder. I use it very rarely. Sometimes it's handy, but it's so heavy that I just don't like it. And I'd rather you work a little longer with the smaller grinder than wrestle that big one if I don't have to. I'm also going to talk about, about DeWalt just briefly, that I don't think DeWalt tools are as good now as they used to be. I used to kind of like DeWalt tools. Uh, anymore, I won't buy them. But this is my least used grinder. It is the newest of these grinders. This one is the exception. And it's the only one that the cord is falling apart on. And I have other DeWalt tools that the cords are falling apart on. But this 25 or 30 year old Makita, the cord is in perfect shape. The Craftsman, the cord is in good shape. This Makita, the cord is still in good shape. So there's something about the DeWalt cords that they cut corners somewhere, or it would seem like to me. So, And I've had other DeWalt tools just quit prematurely. 
So I'm not as happy with DeWalt's. Makita's have been great. Milwaukee, of course, is always a great tool. And some, there are some other industrial grinders like a Metabo that are supposed to be wonderful, but I've never invested the money in one. These have always worked just fine for me. One thing people like to do with an angle grinder is put a wire cup brush on. This really cleans scale off of a piece phenomenally well. It is an awesome, impressive tool. It is a scary tool. This brush wants to grab stuff. It will throw the piece you're working on across the shop. If it hits somebody, it will hurt them. It will go through a window. It will stick in the wall if it throws it hard enough. If it can't throw the piece, it's going to throw the grinder back at you. If you get that brush stuck in your clothes, it's going to wrap them up and it's not going to be a good day. Wire brushes on a, an angle grinder are quite dangerous. They just, they run too fast as far as I'm concerned. But there's a solution to that problem. This isn't really an angle grinder. This is called a polisher sander, and it looks just like an angle grinder. It's every bit as well built as a Makita angle grinder. It is made by Makita, and it's a great tool, but it's got a variable speed so you can turn it down and make it a lot safer than just the regular wire brush. You should also always use guards on your angle grinder but the guard only comes down to about here and the wire brush is completely left exposed anyways. So that's another problem with the wire brush on an angle grinder. But these sander polishers, if you're going to run a wire brush, I really recommend these. Yes, they're a lot more expensive, but they're way safer. You get much more control and a lot more peace of mind out of them. So this is what I would recommend you use for a wire brush. The other tool that gets used a lot is a cutoff disc. And the cutoff discs are very handy. They're a little fragile. It'd be easy to break one, so you absolutely have to keep the guard on when you're using a cutoff disc. If that disc shatters, it goes a lot of bad places. And you don't want one of those. Always wear your safety glasses. Face shield would be better. I have a cutoff disc on this battery powered angle grinder. My first battery powered angle grinder was a DeWalt, and it worked. But the batteries just didn't seem to last. It was an 18 volt, and I used their best batteries, or good lithium batteries, but the batteries just wouldn't survive. These Milwaukee Fuel Tools, and I wish I could get paid by Milwaukee to sponsor their tools and get a whole bunch of these to put in the shop, but I don't think they care what I have to think. But these tools are wonderful. The batteries last way longer than any other tool system I've ever used. And that makes this angle grinder very functional. I, I don't know when I changed this battery last. The DeWalt, I used, used to have to change it twice just to get through a piece of one-inch bar stock. But this I can take out to the stock rack. I don't have to drag an extension cord. I can take this to the steel yard with me if I take a bunch of spare batteries and some extra cutoff discs. You'll be impressed with how fast you go through cutoff discs if you're doing a bunch of cutting. But you can take it to the steel yard if you need to cut pieces down from 20 foot sticks to 10 foot sticks to get them in the back of your pickup truck or smaller to get them in the back of your car. And if you're not buying a lot, this is a good tool to do that. I have a big saw I use when I'm buying 20, 30, 40, 50 bars at a time. But for just a few, if you're a hobbyist, this thing would be great for that purpose. Or if you've got to go scrap something that somebody's got in their yard and says, yeah, you can have a piece of that, you can take this and cut it off. Throw sparks, so be worried about fire. But the batteries last, it's a powerful grinder. This one's got a brake system, so it shuts it off quick, so when you set it down, it doesn't keep running. I really like this. If I could afford it, I would have four or five of these in my shop with the cutoff disc, the flap sanding disc, a hard wheel, and who knows what else, but I would just have these set up and ready to go. And it is handy for all your angle grinders, if you have more than one, to have them set up with different wheels on them. So you don't have to spend a bunch of time changing wheels. If you can only afford one, it's not that hard to change wheels, and it's worth owning that one angle grinder 
and changing wheels if you need to to do some of this grinding. But if you don't have power in your shop, you can charge these batteries in the house and bring the batteries to the shop and the battery power tools will do the job for you. Now what are you going to spend on a new angle grinder? They are not cheap tools unless you go to a cheap tool store. And when you buy cheap tools, that's what you get and they aren't going to last. Uh, we all have been to Harbor Freight and I hate using them by name, but they are the one I think about. And there are others that sell the same quality tools so that they're not unique. But buying an angle grinder for nineteen ninety five because it's on sale is going to cost you more in gas to go back and buy another one than it would have to buy a decent angle grinder up front. Uh, this particular grinder, this model sells at the local home store for about sixty nine dollars. I found them online for fifty fifty five plus shipping and it's a, a good grinder. This is a Makita four and a half inch angle grinder and you'd buy three of the Harbor Freight ones for the price of one of these. But you're going to run through the Harbor Freight ones maybe in a month, maybe six months, maybe a year. This one I plan to have the rest of my life. And it would be something worth having repaired if the brushes go out or there's a, a problem. It's worth taking to a repair shop and getting it fixed, whereas the Harbor Freight ones are just trash. So I don't really recommend buying cheap tools, but I recognize that that might be all the budget you have, and if that's it, then then make that decision yourself. I'm not going to tell you you can't, I just don't recommend it. But this is actually a pretty good deal. When I looked at this, looked at this particular grinder model at the home center for $69, I noticed that they had a stack that I assume was left from Christmas of this box that is just didn't look right. And it doesn't look right because this is two grinders. This has more in it than just that one grinder. This is brand, brand new. I haven't even taken these out of the box yet. There are two of these and for two of them I got this. It was $99 plus tax. This comes with two of everything. It's got two wrenches, it's got two guards, two handles, two complete ready to go grinders. You could give one to a friend if you wanted to. And it comes with two hard wheels. So if you can find a deal like that, you can get them a little bit cheaper than if you have to buy just the regular off the shelf one at a time grinder. So if you keep your eyes out for a good deal, you might, might get a better price on, on a grinder. But for a lot of the tools we're making, I assume that you have a way to cut material and to shape material. I don't have much choice. It's just a requirement as a blacksmith. And that means you're either doing a lot of work with a file and a hacksaw as your absolute minimum equipment. And I would have these in your shop no matter what. You need a good hacksaw. You need an assortment of good files. But I think if you can afford to go out and buy at least one decent angle grinder, some cutoff blades, some hard wheels, a couple of flap wheels, making things like punches, chisels, hammers, hardies, fullers, whatever you need to continue on and advance in your blacksmithing is going to be a lot easier on you. I think this is worth owning. I would buy one of these before I would start drooling over a belt grinder. I like the belt grinders and I don't use the angle grinders as much as I used to. But these will do most of what I do with a belt grinder except the final polishing and finishing on tools that I'm selling. But tools in the blacksmith shop don't need that. They're going to get beat up anyways. They don't need a fine polish. Uh, 120 flap disc is probably as far as you need to take them. Anyways, that's my opinion. I hope you like the video. I hope there's some good information there that you can use. If you did like the video, give it a thumbs up. Love it if you'd hit that subscribe button. If you want to support the channel financially, there's a link down in the description. But there's no obligation. The content is free, as always. That's just a gratuity if you're so inclined. Stick around. We're going to do some more videos shortly. Try to do one, no, oh, probably every other day at the very least. But get out to the shop. Make something. Stay safe. Wear your safety glasses. And we'll see you next time.